As Africa's leading defence news portal, DefenseWeb aims to give you the latest updates on African defence, the South African National Defence Force and the defence industry. Hi folks, welcome to the past week in defence. In this week's edition on the continent, the USS Herschel Williams exercises with the Nigerian Navy, Minisco drawdown plans remain on track, Gauteng experiences rural crime and another step has been taken to improve rural safety. In SA and EF news, Operation Notlela is now officially over. The SA Air Force acquisition of SAA aircraft was up for discussion. Milkor Y4 grenade launcher project is handed over to the SA Army. And OSR Systems complete first article acceptance tests for Project Bureau. In company news, the Department of Defense appoints the Save Denel team. The US military awards a new contract for Husky user support. Drone Guards looks forward to the autonomous future of drones, and the South African power system specialist Aztec has expanded its business line to include blast-protected seating solutions. In African defense news, USS Herschel Williams exercises with Nigerian Navy. The expeditionary sea base USS Herschel Woody Williams conducted an unmanned aerial vehicle UAV demonstration, a fleet maneuver exercise, and an oil platform security and boarding exercise with the Nigerian Navy in the Gulf of Guinea between 29th of September and the 3rd of October. The Nigerian Navy ships NNS Prosperity, NNS Okpabana, NNS Ekulu, and NNS Nguru worked with Herschel Woody Williams and the Lagos-based Maritime Operations Center to track vessels of interest and simulate interceptions and boardings off the Nigerian coast. The units conducted the exercise to build partner capacity and exercise Nigerian capabilities to track and intercept vessels of interest within the country's economic exclusive zone, the US Navy said. Herschel Woody Williams also deployed a UAV to demonstrate the unique capabilities provided by the system. No boardings or personal transfers were conducted during the training evolution as a precaution against COVID-19. The UN Security Council will soon be presented with a joint strategy for the progressive and phased drawdown of Minusco, according to Leila Serugui, head of the UN Stabilization Mission in the Democratic Republic of Congo. She told the Security Council in early October that President Felix Shisadeki was requesting a progressive transfer of tasks from the mission to government. The DRC government agrees in the coming years that Monisco will consolidate its footprint in northern Kivu, south Kivu and Ituri provinces where conflict persists, while continuing its good officers' work and institutional strengthening at a national level, Zirugui said. She sees Monisco able to withdraw relatively soon from the Kasai region, while an improved security situation should enable it to scale back its military presence in the Tanga'ika. Minusco remains focused on improving implementation of its protection of civilians mandate, including deploying new technologies such as unarmed drones, alongside working with local communities and civil society to promote reconciliation and monitor human rights. She appealed to the Council to support Minusco efforts to foster a community-based approach to reintegration of ex-combatants in the east of the country. Gauteng, not immune to rural crime. South Africa's smallest and most urbanized province, Gauteng, is not immune to the scourge of farm attacks and murders. The provincial member of the executive committee tasked with community safety, Faith Mazibuko, said there were 445 farm attacks in Gauteng in the financial year, which ended on the 31st of March 2020. In a written response to a question posed by Freedom Front Plus MB Kurbis Hoffman, she stated 11 people were killed during the execution of rural crimes in the 12-month period and just three suspects arrested. There are three rural crime hotspots in Gauteng, with two, Hekput and Mulders Drift on the West Rand. The third is Gamil Drift, east of Pretoria. Hoffman's call comes weeks after Police Minister Becky Sele reportedly told a meeting of farmers and others involved in agriculture in KwaZulu-Natal there was no need to declare farm attacks and murders a priority crime. This was because they were included in the national effort against attacks on people and property, as well as murder. Another step to improving rural safety. Early October saw a high-level meeting where police, organized agriculture and civil society took rural security head-on, with commitments made in a number of areas of concern. SA Police Service, SAP's National Commissioner, General Khekla Satole, presided over the meeting attended by senior representatives of Agri-SA, TLU, Transvaal Landbue Uni, and AfriForum. The meeting agreed to formalize establishment of national and local joint rural safety command centers to integrate personnel and resources, including the use of helicopters and drones. And in SA and DF news, Operation Notlela, over. 
As of Wednesday, 30th of September, Operation Notlela, the National Defence Force's commitment to the coronavirus pandemic in South Africa, ended. Soldiers, medics, sappers and other military musterings who found themselves patrolling streets, screening and testing, as well as providing potable water and the necessary logistic support for all taskings, are now confined to operational bases, according to a SA National Defence Force Corporate Communications Directorate statement. There are around 8,000 military personnel still on Notlela deployment, with 2,000 operationally active at any one time. Indications are this arrangement will continue until level one of the national lockdown is lifted. Apart from the logistical effort involved in returning to home bases, all that remains at presence of the military involvement are pending court cases, at least one of which could turn into a murder charge. This is in connection with the death of Alexandra resident Collins Corsa after allegedly being beaten by soldiers on Good Friday. Other pending court cases involve shootings in KwaZulu-Natal, Limpopo and Mpumalanga. More than 30 incidents of soldier brutality and violence during the lockdown are being investigated by the military ombud, retired three-star general Fusi Masondo. SA Air Force acquisition of SA Airways aircraft was on the table. More information on the now denied sale of or transfer of three South African Airways SAA aircraft to the SA Air Force indicates that it can be termed exploratory tasks did take place. The apparent acquisition by the SA Air Force of three SAA Airbus A340s slipped into the public domain as margin notes in a speech delivered by outgoing Chief of the Air Force, Lieutenant General Zaik Simsimang. He did not verbally mention the aircraft or their possible acquisition during his retirement parade at AFB SWAT Corp on the 30th of September. It now appears when the business rescue practitioners for the national airline launched the tender for the sale of the A340s in January, the Department of Defence expressed an interest in acquiring some of the aircraft. A few days before Msumang retired, a Department of Public Enterprises official asked the business rescue practitioners to finalise the transaction with the Department of Defence. The Business Rescue Practitioners pointed out this would contravene Public Finance Management Act requirements and the rules governing tenders. The rules require the Business Rescue Practitioners assess all offers received to determine which one is in SAA's best interest. The Business Rescue Practitioners agreed to schedule a meeting with officials from the Department of Defence and the Department of Public Enterprises, but it was cancelled when the Department of Defence failed to respond. Ironically, it is scheduled for the same day as General Msimung's retirement parade, the business rescue practitioners told a reliable defense web source. Milkor Y4 grenade launcher project handed over to SA Army. The Department of Defense and Arms Corps have officially handed over Project Kamagelo to the South African Army after Milkor successfully delivered 370 Y4 medium velocity six shot grenade launchers under the program. The handover ceremony took place on the 7th of October at the Murray Hill Special Forces facility outside Pretoria and included an exhibition and live fire demonstration as well as signing and exchange of certificates. Representatives from Arms Corps, the Department of Defence, Material Division, South African Army, Rain Metal Denial Munition and Milkor were present, including SA Army Chief Lieutenant General Lawrence Mbata. Puti Jackson Mampa, Milkor CEO, said he is proud to be able to supply the SANDF with a new weapon and added that the project has solidified a bond between Milkor and ammunition supplier Rain Missile Denial Munition. OSR Systems complete first article acceptance tests for Project Bero. The integrated bridge system and mission management system for the first Project Bero inshore patrol vessel supplied by OSR Maritime Systems have successfully completed first article acceptance tests as the program moves forward. First article testing consists of a series of formal contractual tests conducted to ensure the effectiveness of the manufacturing process, equipment and procedures. These tests are conducted on a random sample from the first production lot. OSR Maritime Systems supplies the integrated navigation and tactical systems for the vessels which will be used for coastal maritime activities which include patrol and protection of economic waters. We're proud of being part of the South African Bureau program and being able to optimize a system design, commented Ken Kirkpatrick, President and CEO, OSR Maritime Systems. As part of the Defense Industrial Participation, DRP, and the Enterprise and Supplier Development, ESD, programs, we are very proud to work with Sabicom Atlas Defense, our local industrial partner, supporting a sustainable defense industry in South Africa. And in company news, Department of Defense appoints Save Denal team. 
Alarmed by the financial difficulties that deny on their impact on SA National Defence Force projects, the Department of Defence has appointed a Save Denial technical team. This is according to Secretary for Defence Soto Kujo in a speech delivered on her behalf by Department of Defence Director Industry Support Trevor McKetty at the recent Aerospace Maritime and Defence Conference. Kujo stated, The problems of Denial are giving us sleepless nights and that is why we have appointed the Save Denial technical team. The team comprises industry body AMD's Executive Director Sandile and Klovu, Arms Corps Non-Executive Director Dr. Moses Kanyele, the Chief Executives of Denel acting at present, and Arms Corps as well as representatives from the Departments of Public Enterprises and Defence. According to Kudrow, the department asked Arms Corps to pay salaries directly and ordered Denel to centralise all funding from it to avoid money intended to equip our forces with the right equipment at the same time being used for salaries by Denel. New contract for Husky user support. Critical Solutions International CSI, has been awarded a $35 million contract modification from the United States Army to support non-US operators of the Husky 2G mine detection system. CSR, an Airbus Defence Group company, announced the contract modification at the end of September. The extension will add two years of ordering options to the base contract, originally awarded in March 2017. The move is expected to enable foreign military sales FMS customers to procure protected payloads, spare parts, as well as training support for Husky 2G counter improvised explosive device vehicle system. Under the base contract awarded in 2017 and valued at $132 million, CSR successfully delivered 41 Husky vehicle systems with associated protected payloads including interrogation arms, ground penetrating radar, 360-degree cameras, self-defense remote weapon stations, and RPG nets. Husky 2G vehicles have been delivered to multiple foreign military sales customers under this contract supporting route clearance capability developments in Egypt, Saudi Arabia and Jordan. In addition, US sponsored building partner capacity programs have been leveraged on this contract to provide Husky 2Gs with protected payloads to the Ukraine and Iraq, as well as part of the Global Train and Equip and Counter ISIS Train and Equip Fund programs, Airbus said. Drone guards look forward to autonomous future of drones. Autonomous flight is where it is going to end up for sure, was among the key remarks made by Kim James, Director of UAV Aerial Works and Drone Guards, when presenting on the future of drone technology in the security sector. James told the recent African Drones Conference 2020 that Sky Robots, a drone development company she has, is betting on the future. It is developing a fully autonomous drone specifically for security. James said that utilizing drones in the security sector can be about managing expectations. Applications for drones in security is limited due to South Africa prescribing to the International Civil Aviation Organization standards. These clients would be asking us whether we could fly a drone out of a control room in Santon, 50 kilometers away, and unfortunately, that is not possible yet, said James. While it is technologically possible, regulations prevent long-distance control room operations. James is aiming for the future where one pilot can control a swarm of drones from a remote location and even have fully autonomous swarms of drones. Blast protected seats for Africa. A South African power system specialist Aztec has expanded its business line to include blast protected seating solutions which have been installed on a number of locally designed and built armored vehicles. According to Dean Marcus, a director at Aztec, the company is the local agent for Mobius, which has installed its combat-proven blast-protected seats on more than 45 different vehicle types in 26 countries, with about 13,000 seats supplied. In South Africa, customers include the Bruiser Tech Bruiser 112 vehicle, which has successfully undergone blast trials, the OTT Puma Mark 36, and a 4x4 armored vehicle that has been exported in small numbers. Marcus explained there is a worldwide trend towards blast protected seats as militaries spend more on protecting their troops who are becoming more costly to train. Although armoured vehicles often successfully stop the hull from being breached by an explosion, the shock of the blast can damage internal organs, break bones and cause other injuries that can be prevented with blast protected seats. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, our daily and weekly newsletter and our other social media platforms if you enjoyed the webcast. Leave your comments below. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and we'll see you next week.